Hare Krishna. I'm Basu Ghosh Das, President of ISKCON Baroda, Gujarat, India. Joined ISKCON back in 1973, Chicago. Came to India in 1974 as a way of introduction. So the topic today is books are the basis. Uh, we are called Rupanugas by some. So Rupa Goswami wrote Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he wrote that Bhakti, without reference to Vedic literature, is just creates a disturbance in society. Bhakti means devotion to God. In our case, because we follow the Bhagavat Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam, God is Lord Krishna. Tenth Canto, Dashamaskanda of Srimad Bhagavatam is the life story of Lord Krishna. It's the largest portion of the Bhagavatam. So when Prabhupada began the ISKCON institution in 1965, uh, all he had was a translation of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Subsequently, he published the Bhagavad Gita after beginning ISKCON. And then very quickly, he translated the 10th canto, the life of Lord Krishna, with the help of the late lamented George Harrison, who maybe Young people may or may not have heard his name, but he was a famous British musician, member of the music group The Beatles in the 1960s, which is quite a few years ago now. But with the help from George Harrison, financial help, he published Lord Krishna's life in storybook form, known as Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So... In this way, Prabhupada, following, in the orders, following the orders of his guru, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, to preach Krishna Bhakti, devotion to Lord Krishna in the English language, fulfilled that order. Uh, so Rupa Goswami said, the Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Vidhim Vida. Without reference to the Vedas, Shruti, Smriti is the Dharma Shastras, the law books for humanity. Uh, devotees should read Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavad Gita 16.7. And there are similar purports in the Bhagavatam in the fourth canto that echo the same purport in 16.7. Talking about the Smritis, the Dharma Shastras, the law, the law books, Vedic law. Sruti Smriti Puranadi. When it says Puranadi, it means the Puranas, the histories, like the Bhagavatam. There are 18 Mahapuranas, 18 Upa Puranas, and Mahabharata. Bhagavad Gita is part of Mahabharata. Mahabharata, Ramayana, Valmiki Ramayana. So these are Vedic literatures. Prabhupada had a desire to translate all of them, but uh, alas, he didn't have the time. Being elderly when he started his movement, uh, also he was, he concentrated on word for word translation of the Bhagavatam and commenting on each and every verse. And he went up to the 10th canto, 13th chapter, where thereafter leaving this world in November 1977. So, the ISKCON movement is based on his purports to all of the verses of the Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. Of course, there are other Vedic literatures, as Rupa Goswami outlined, but uh, to get guidance as to how to follow these Vedic literatures, we have Prabhupada's purports. And they should be the basis for taking any decisions ideological decisions in our movement. And based on his teachings, 
we also follow the, the, that was also mentioned by Rupa Goswami, Shruti Smriti Purana di Pancharatra. So the Pancharatra Agama Shastras uh, detail the worship of the deities. And that's where we get the system of deity worship. Now the deity worship has been extant in India at least from the time of the Bhagavatam. Because in the 10th canto, in the story of Lord Krishna, there's a, one of the stories is the kidnapping of Rukmini, who was Krishna's principal wife. And she was kidnapped in front of a temple of Durga Devi. And there was a plan made between Krishna and Rukmini that that was the time and place when she went into the temple. She was supposed to marry someone else, Shishupal. And as a part of the marriage rituals, she went, went into the temple to get the blessings of Goddess Durga Devi. And when she came out, Lord Krishna came on a chariot and in front of all the other kings, he grabbed her, put her on the chariot and took her away. This is one of the stories in the Krishna Supreme Personality of Godhead book and in the 10th canto, of the, which, is the ten, which is the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. So, I mean, these stories teach us mm, Lord Krishna's transcendental pastimes and by hearing those we purify our heart as per the first canto of the Bhagavatam, Srinvatam Swakata Krishna, his own stories, Swakata, his own stories, Krishna's own stories, Punya Shravana Kirtanaha, hearing and repeating those stories is a pious credit. It bestows piety, Hridayantastahahiyabhadrani, those inauspicious things in the heart are destroyed. Hridayantastahahiyabhadrani, vidhunoti surit satam. So someone becomes situated in the mode of goodness, giving up the modes of passion and ignorance. Mode of goodness is sattvic, passion and ignorance, rajasic and tamasic, by hearing these stories of the Bhagavatam. So one can purify his existence. Now some people, a god brother recently wrote to me, the system of Varnashram is for the soul, not for the body. But uh, I beg to differ with that view because it's only in a human body that one can read the Bhagavatam. I haven't seen uh, animals, you know, dogs, hogs, camels, and asses recently reading the Bhagavatam. I'm sorry. So we have a human body. We have human intelligence. Only human beings can study the Bhagavatam. And the system of Varnashram is, Krishna says, I created it in Gita. And in the Bhagavat, it, it's described, there are different types of dharma for different classes of society. In the first canto, ninth chapter, Bhishma, the grandfather of the Pandavas, Grandfather, not as a progenitor because he was a brahmachari, but in age, in terms of age, he was their grandfather. So he, he, at the end of the battle of Kurukshetra, which is where Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, he's lying on a bed of arrows and Lord Krishna took Yudhishthir and came in front of him so that Yudhishthir could hear Dharma Upadesh, the teachings of Sanatan Dharma, the teachings of Vedic literature. And he outlined that there are different dharmas. So these dharmas are to be followed in human society, not in the animal society. Animal society's dharma, nature, duties, activities is fixed by nature. But human beings have been given intelligence and independence. Now minute independence, Prabhupada said. How is that? We don't want to continue suffering in this material body, but we have to. That is, we don't have the, that much independence to stop the suffering. We are inside the body, the soul. We are not the body, but we are in the body. We happen to be in a human body, which is a great fortune, because by having a human body, we have the requisite intelligence to read the Bhagavatam. So ISKCON devotees have been distributing these books all over the world and the fruit of that is that persons who are not following Vedic culture have taken to Vedic culture. 
So Vedic culture has many aspects. And there's some aspects that we are weaker and some aspects we are stronger. One of the weaker aspects is that we didn't study in the Vedic educational system. And Lord Krishna and Balaram, they also had a delayed education because the, the, the story of the Bhagavatam uh, reveals that they were hiding uh, and living as simple cowherds. And after 16 years, when they came back to their parents from hiding as cowherds with Nanda and Yashoda, they went to the Gurukul of Sandipani and they studied in the Vedic educational syllabus and in the 45th chapter, the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam is just described what they studied. The Vedas, the Upanishads, the Dhanurveda, the military science and the 64 arts. So uh, we, we also see in India that this system of education is extant. It has not died out but it is not being stressed by the leaders of society because those leaders have changed. Uh, Gita describes that the leaders of society were pious kings, Rajarshis, evam parampara praptam imam rajarshayo viduhu. The Rajarshi system is gone. And a Rajarshi becomes a Rishi, Raja Rishi, by studying Vedic literature like Krishna and Balaram studied in the childhood. The Pandavas studied that. Guru Gram, which is, again, it has been renamed Guru Gram next to Delhi. It used to be in the middle, it was Gurgaon. So Guru Gram was where Dronacharya taught the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The same thing that Krishna and Balaram studied with Sandipani, the Vedas, the Upanishads, the military science, the 64 arts. Today, the Brahmins only study Vedic literature. Now, how many Brahmins study Vedic literature? It has become fewer and fewer because there's no king to support them. The kings would support this system. Anyway, uh, I don't want to take too much time. I've already taken too much time. Uh, I'll end here and request you all, if you want to get an idea of this great culture and civilization and the science of Krishna consciousness to read Prabhupada, he explains all this in his purports. These things he explains uh, in detail. So please read Prabhupada's books. Hare Krishna.